my heathens. So today's video I'm pretty excited about because it is another tutorial. I want to do a like New Year's Eve or day look depending on when you were to do your makeup to celebrate. So I have a very distinct idea in my head and I'm going to see how well I can execute it. And I'm going to bring you along for that journey. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right on in. I have already done my brows just like I did last time, but I used the NYX eyebrow pencil in taupe this time. It's got just a little, it's not the thinnest tip, but it works. And then it's got a little brush on the end rather than a spoolie. So for eyeshadow, which is what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go in with the Pretty Vulgar Nightingale Eyeshadow Palette. I love this palette. I got it from BoxyCharm probably not too long after I initially signed up for BoxyCharm. And for a while, like a good while, I was using this palette. Ooh, I almost knocked everything over. I was using this palette almost every single day. I'm going to cut the light up just a little bit. And it's a lot of like neutral, smoky type eyeshadows. And this is what I'm going to use to create my base. Well, almost all of the eyeshadow look is going to be this palette. And then I have an eyeshadow that I want to use as like my pop, but you'll see. So I'm going to make sure this brush is stained but clean. I mean, I'm not making sure it's stained. I'm making sure the color on it is stained and not like actual eyeshadow still in it. So first I'm going to go in with Pillow Fight, which is like a very, very neutral, um, almost the same color as my skin shade. And I'm just going to lay that everywhere. You're not really going to be able to see it, but that's okay. It's just going to give us a nice base to work with when we start putting down everything else. And then taking that same brush, I'm going to go in with, oops, I'm going to go in with Hide and Seek, which is this light brown sand taupe and I'm gonna get a pretty generous amount and I'm just going to put that into the crease and take it up pretty pretty high because for the idea I have in my head I need more lid space to work with than what I actually have so we're going to make the best of what I've got. So same thing on this eye, just working that shade along the crease and kind of up and out. I want this look to be very, very va va voom kind of. I don't know if I don't know if it's gonna have that effect or if it's just going to look too much but we will we will find out once I uh, get there next I'm gonna take a different brush and I'm gonna go in with this shade flip out which is a very deep matte brown again I'm gonna try to be a little generous without getting so much that I can't control what it's doing. And I'm going to go right in, right where I put that other shade. And blend along the edges to diffuse it out. And then same thing on the other eye. I'm 
my eyebrows are not the same shape so that's why it probably consistently looks like my eyeshadows are not the same shape because one will always be closer to my eyebrow than the other one Alright, so I have a nice smoky effect going along the top. I'm going to now take After Midnight, which is a like deep gray charcoal shade. And I'm actually going to get a smaller brush for this. Because I want this to be pretty defined a little lower than the last few shades have been so I'm just gonna make sure there's nothing on this because I think the last one I used on this brush was a shimmer and I don't want this to shimmer <laughs> at least not yet I don't want this color to shimmer so I'm gonna just tap into that along the edge of the brush and what I'm gonna do with this is take it there is a bit of fallout with this shade so you do have to be careful and I'm just going to go along the crease under the other shades, but create a nice defined line. I don't know if you can see the fallout. Oh, hiccup. Same thing. I'm going to do this other eye. I got to be careful with this eye doing this because I'm going to cover this eye a little bit more than I intend to, but the way that I have to do it on this side is a bit awkward. The other side's a bit deeper, so I'm going to deepen this side up just a little. And then what I'm going to do is take the brush that I was using before this one and just kind of merge where the charcoal and the brown meat. I've got a very smoky eye going on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cut crease type deal. I'm going to take my e.l.f. Camo Concealer in the shade Fair Warm, which is way too light for me as an actual concealer. And I'm going to take this little uh, flat concealer brush, I believe it was an Eco Tools brush, and just get the tiniest little amount of concealer. And I'm going to carve out the crease. So I'm going to start by putting it down here at the bottom and then gently work it up, kind of creating the shape that I want. And I'm going to be honest with y'all, I'm going to do the few times I've tried cut creases, my eyes are never even. I don't know how people achieve that, but I'm going to try to get them as even as I possibly can. I'm going to do one eye at a time. So that's that eye. Now I'm going to take kind of the star of the show, which is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Liberty. It's a 
gorgeous, gorgeous silver. I'm going to take that on my finger. And I'm just going to pat it onto the concealer. I'm going to try to not go too far up, just enough to like put a little bit on the black. But I still want it to be a pretty distinct line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush again that I used the charcoal on and just go right back above where I just put that silver down to rebuild some of that pigmentation and make it a little bit sharper again. That is what I've got. Now for the other eye, I'm going to have silver on my finger the whole time. I'm going to go back into my concealer, just tap the smallest amount on the brush. This is the best brush that I've found to do this. I've seen other people use brushes that look like they would work really well, but all right, now I'm trying not to cover this eye but still have the mirror where I can see what I'm doing. Try to see if they're around the same size and shape. And then get a little bit more. Let it dry a second. Forgot I let the other one dry for a second. My forehead itches. Ah. And then I'm just gonna tap that silver on. Depending on how this all comes together, I have another color I may put on top of the silver. But we'll address that when we get there, if I wind up using it. Now I'm just going to try to even them out a little bit. Using what is left on my finger. I feel like this one looks a lot better than this one. But I think it's just a little more round, whereas the other one is a little more crescent moon. Alright, it's as good as we're getting for now. We might play around with them a little bit later again. But I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other eye, and that's take that brush that I used the charcoal gray on. And just go over the top. To give it some definition. Now, I gotta clean my finger off or I'm going to get silver all over my face. And I'm also going to clean up the edges of the eye look. All right. So I'm gonna take makeup wipe. I can peel it open. And I'm just going to stick my finger in it and drag along the edge to give it a nice crisp edge. And do the same thing with the other side. And that's what we're working with now. So now to go in with the base. I'm going to use the Tarte Base Tape Hydrating Primer. This is the Tarte Double Duty Beauty. And I'm just going to put this, a little bit of it, kind of everywhere. It tickles running down my forehead. It feels weird. 
Make sure I don't have any more silver still on my hand, because the last thing I need is to spread silver across my face. I mean, I guess it's not the last thing I need. I can think of a few more things that could go wrong that I uh, would not particularly enjoy, but that's the one that's currently most likely to happen. Now, I do have oily skin, and this is a hydrating base. So I'm using it for this look to help give a glow to the skin because that's kind of what I'm going for. But if I was actually going to wear this for an extended period of time, right around here, I would use either the AOA Studio Wonder Skin or I would use the Benefit Professional to make it last a little bit longer. Just FYI. So now... Trying to figure out which foundation I want to use. I think I'm just going to go with my Tried and True, which is my CoverGirl, CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made in the shade L10, which is Fair Porcelain. I really, really like this foundation. I just put a pump on the back of my hand. Um, I used to not wear foundation a whole lot and I bought this kind of on a whim because our local Rite Aid was closing and they had you know all of their leftover stock on sale and this happened to be the lightest shade of this that they had in stock and they had it on sale for like three or four dollars so I was like you know what I'll try it and it actually worked out pretty well so I've been using it pretty consistently ever since. Don't know that it's exactly my best shade match, but when I was younger and would try to get foundations, particularly from the drugstore, because they have not always had the best shade ranges, um, they would always tend to be very orange, or they would oxidize very orange. And I think this one suits me pretty well like face to neck comparison I don't know how it picks up on camera in this light but I feel like I can wear this foundation out <laughs> and wear it all day and not wind up getting crazy looks because I'm not the same color uh, from my face to my neck and I feel like I don't necessarily have to blend it down quite as far to make my neck the same color. I just try to blend out so that there's no obvious, you know, foundation line. And it's not exactly the most full coverage foundation, so keep that in mind if what you're looking for is really full coverage. I'm going to cut the light up a little bit. I'm losing a little bit of light here. Because, like on this side, you can still see some of my pink red pigmentation so like I said that's just something to keep in mind depending on what you look for in a foundation as far as coverage I don't necessarily mind still seeing some of the redness as long as it evens it out a little bit because my face does get very flushed very easily, and I don't like dealing with that all day long. So now I'm going to set it down real quick. This does not need a whole lot of setting, but I still do a little bit because it does help make it last a little longer, especially with a hydrating base under it. So I'm taking the Ciate London Translucent Powder. It's the Extraordinary Translucent Powder. I'm just going to... Pat this along the areas where I will be applying additional product. Sorry if you see powder flying everywhere. I always double check before I start applying stuff if it's enough powder 
because I don't want things to get patchy because of that. And if, if I have time and I just want to sit here while I'm doing my makeup, this will, this foundation will set down pretty well by itself. But if I want to go ahead and move on to the next step, I do have to set it. Now, that being said, if I'm using a, if it's just like an everyday day, I don't use everyday day. If it's like an everyday look for me, I don't typically use blush or bronzer every day. So if all I'm doing is foundation, highlighter, eye stuff, I will not set that one. And I'll go in with a creamier highlight, like a ColourPop Super Shock, and I don't need to set it. And it is fine. So now that that is sufficiently set down, I'm going to go in with bronzer and I'm going to use the Gigi Gorgeous um, bronzer that was the Ipsy collab. This is the Six Sculpt Bronzer Duo in Turnt and Extra. And I'm going to just take a little BH Cosmetics number four brush and I'm going to tap into both sides and just start bronzing up the cheeks a little bit. I'm not going to do anything too heavy for this look. I just want a little bit of definition because I do want this look to stay nice and light and glowy. As I said a little earlier, I want it to be very bright. And I feel like particularly on my skin, if I use too much bronzer, it starts to look not, not heavy in the sense of like how foundation can get cakey and heavy. But heavy as in you can just tell there's a lot going on. And I want to keep this very light. That way it just gives me a little bit of definition. Take a little bit of the lighter color. Just go down the side of my nose. My eyes are uneven. Now I'm going to go in with blush. And I'm going to use the Ciate London Marble Light. Um, what is it? Illuminating Blusher in the shade Dusk. I've been using this a lot recently since I've received it. I actually really like it. Oh no! I put a hole in it. Just the tiniest little fingernail spot. Do you like my nails? Alright, now I'm going to go in with this. My nails, by the way, if anyone is interested. Oh, and this is ABH Cosmetics number 2 brush. That's what I use for my blush. Uh, my nails are a color street um, design. And this just gives nice color back to the skin but where we want color whereas my color is not always where I want it or the intensity that I want it. It tends to be a little brighter than what I would like. So this just gives a soft natural flush. Bring it down a little bit. So it blends into that bronzer some. Now, highlight. And then once I do the highlight, I will figure out if I'm going to put that extra on my eye. For highlight, I'm going to use the Revolution Skin Kiss. And this is in the shade Frozen Kiss. These pans are gigantic. This is a like silver um, highlighter. I almost called it a blush. So this is a silver highlighter. And I know that silver is not everyone's color. And that's fine. But that's what I want for this look. Because I feel like it's going to complement the eyeshadow the best. So I'm going to just take my Moda... BMX 265 Glow Brush. 
And this highlighter, from what I remember, these do have a little bit of glitter in them, which is what I'm looking for. I'm just going to take this. Yep, a little bit of glitter. But it's an undertone that I feel like really complements the eyeshadow without being too, too much. I mean, I have gray silver highlights that I could have used if I wanted a full silver. And I don't know if it picks up on camera, but this does have almost a pink-purple reflect. Like, it's not pure... It's not like a blue silver. It's not pure silver. On the bridge of my nose. Cupid's bow. Alright. Now I need to kind of blend my top and bottom part of my eyes. So I'm going to take the brush that I use for the charcoal and I'm going to go into that brown shade called Flip Out. <laughs> And I'm going to just take it right under my eye, blending up into this. And I'm really going to smoke it along my lower lash. Do the same thing with the other side. Not exactly the most clean blend, but we'll fix it. Now I'm going to go in with the shade After Midnight. And what I'm going to do, because that line is so sharp here, is I'm going to pat it right under that first. See how I did that to connect it? And then I'm going to smoke it along the lower lash line. And it, of course, is a little bit darker because that's fresh. So then I'm going to take it back up around the top and just make that connection. And then I'll do the same on the other eye. Tap it right along here to connect them. Bring it along the top. To match the intensity and then smoke it out. Now what I'm gonna do, I caught that, is I'm gonna take the eyeshadow, the eyeshadow wipe, the makeup wipe that I used for the eyeshadow earlier and I'm just going to tap along that area and kind of try to diffuse where it came a little too low without creating a harsh line like we did before and without pulling up too much um, of everything. It's a little more intense than I wanted, but I think we might just have to deal with it. I'm trying to take my foundation brush and kind of go over it a little bit. Like I said, I had an idea in my head, and I wasn't sure exactly how well I was going to execute it. I feel like the blush is a little intense, too, now. So I'm going to take that same foundation brush and just kind of pat over my cheeks. And then I'm going to take uh, my powder brush, if I can get it in my hand. And just go over everything. Alright. So I'm going to take my highlight again. And I'm going to get a 
small brush and I'm going to tap into it so that we can get a little inner corner highlight. I'm going to take it under a little bit and up. And then same thing on the other side. Under a little bit and up. And then using this same brush, I'm going to do a little brow bone highlight using that same color to just kind of break the eyeshadow from my eyebrow. <laughs> On this side, there's a little extra room, but just adds a little, little break. just in case we're gonna leave it like that all right now mascara i'm gonna go in with my wander beauty mile high club mascara and ooh, do i want more sparkle okay actually i'm gonna use that extra product because i feel like this just needs a little more oomph and that is the Stila Glitter and Glow in the shade Diamond Dust, which is silver glitter, essentially. But I don't want it to become too overwhelming, so I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger. And I'm going to tap it onto the... Um, the Silver Super Shock. And I don't know if you can tell, but it just adds some hollow glitter. And do the same thing on the other side. I don't know how well that's going to pick up, but all right, now I feel a little better because I wanted this to be really glowy. So let me make sure I get all of that off my finger well, as much as I can. It does leave a bit of glitter residue. All right, now I'm going to go in with the Mile High Mascara. Wonder Beauty makes amazing mascaras, by the way. If you've never tried one, you really need to try either this one or the um, Unlashed. The Unlashed stays in my bathroom because it's my everyday work mascara. And then this one stays in here for videos. I love them both so much. I want to say that they both retail for $24, which can be a little pricey if you're like me and you like, you, like you have some drugstore favorites, but I think both of these are definitely worth the price, especially if you can get them on sale. I can't be the one who the only one who pretty much holds my breath while I do this. And then bottom lashes real quick. Boom. 
mascara is on. Now for the lips, I'm going to make sure I don't have any foundation on my mouth. My mouth is slightly healing here. So I'm hoping that what I'm going to use doesn't pick up on that too bad. And since the eye is pretty bold, I don't want to do a deep red lip, but I still want a red-ish lip. So I'm going to go in with one of my favorites, if I can find it. It is somewhere over here. Should be. It was this morning. Here it is. <laughs> and this is a an orange red. And it is Girl Crush by Half Caked. I am obsessed with this color. Oh, they smell so good. Mm. Now this is very bold. So if you wanted to go with a nude lip, totally get it. I don't. And that, I have not set my face, but this is the finished look. So I'm going to use the Iconic London Prep Set Glow because it does give a glowy look. So this is it. This is my New Year's slash New Year's Eve celebration look with crimped hair. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of this look? Is this a look that you would wear? And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!